Hi everyone, my name is Kyle, and my mom is blind. She, I remember as a, ch a child she would always say to me, Kyle, can you come here for a second? I need to borrow your eyes. Of course, I went off to college, can't be there for her all the time. So this weekend we've created something just for her. Hi, uh, our product is Eyes on Demand, and it's just for people like Kyle's mom. And if you think that you know there aren't as many blind people in the world, uh, let me just give you a crazy statistic. There are about 48 million legally blind people worldwide. One million of them, adults above the age of 18, are in the US. 21 million visually impaired people living in the US. These people have plenty of problems. All of us are talking about augmented reality. We are enriching each and every sense we have, but these people are still living in the dark. So our project is to sort of bring them up to speed at least. You know, make sure that you know we were told on Friday, go ahead, take a risk. But what about these guys? How do they take risks? So our project is to make sure they come up to speed and they can take those you know, small risks in their life. They don't have to worry about going out of house and thinking, what if I get lost? Worrying about going to a mall and thinking, will I be able to go to the third store? What if I step, like, you know, what if I make two extra steps? So that's what our project is all about, giving them that freedom, giving them that sense of independence. We thought about a lot of solutions. Uh, the one on the bottom right was the one which came closest. Uh, but then, in, yeah, we thought that you know these are all solutions which are possibly a bit in the future. We want to do something as soon as possible, something which we can have uh, hit the ground running maybe in the next year. So we thought of matrix. You know, <laughs> the world for the, for the blind is a bit like the matrix. They can't really see a lot, and they still feel like a maze. So we wanted to do something like that. And one of the best dialogues in the movie is "Time I need an exit." So we thought of that, and we thought, hey, what if there's an operator for everyone? an operator for each and every blind person in the world. These operators can be your friends, can be your family, can be a volunteer somewhere, or it can be one of our own operators. And that's what our model is all about. So uh, on the very left side, you can see a person wearing one of the gadgets. These gadgets are, you know, it's a basic mobile phone with a lot of sensors which have all of these things in it. Plus, we want to enrich the data coming in from the mobile sensors with other sensors like a sonar. Right now, we've only implemented sonar in this. Uh, but we also want to implement other sensors like RFID tags so that within your house you're able to identify a lot of things easily. Uh, what you see on the second column is what the interface of an operator would look like. They can possibly see the objects, they also get a sense of depth perception, how far the object is. So they can give very accurate commands to them that, hey, uh, the store for you is on at least five meter ahead or you can take three steps or four steps. There will be a lot of training in this, that's one of the uh, biggest problems we'll also face. But the applications are just immense. We can help them navigate, we can help them make the right dress. One of the things Kyle's mom mentioned was that, you know, every now and then she'd be waiting at the street, waiting for somebody to come so that they can read the credit card number to her. It's stupid. These credit card companies can easily implement braille, you know, printing on the credit card, but they don't do it because they don't think about the market. It's a very underserved market. And that's what we're trying to hit at. <coughs> and this is uh, the basic details of the background. And what we want to do is not just focus on the device. It's, this is the device one of the components, the service is the other component. This is where we think our differentiator will sort of come in. We want to build a social network of trusted people whom you can go to. A trusted network of people whom you can go and say, these are my friends, these are my family. The first call goes to them. And if they are not available, then the call goes to one of the operators who can charge you a small fee, something in the order of maybe 50 cents a minute. And we help you solve a problem within like five minutes or ten minutes. You, you, you pay like two dollars or three dollars, but you feel so much independent. And we talked to Kyle's mom and she said she's willing to pay like two hundred dollars a month. She doesn't care about that. So we thought there is a decent potential here in the market. And uh, we, we talked about the business numbers, but I want to show you guys a demo first. We talk, uh, we talk about this at the same time. So Alex and uh, our man machine will show you how the project actually works. Uh, you guys can go ahead and maybe you know pick somebody and show them how exactly it works. So you can see uh, Alex is wearing one of the device and she can't really see. Somebody on the other end, uh, somebody like uh, Matthew, will be an operator who can actually see everything which Alex is seeing. And at the same time, Matthew also has her GPS location. From the sonar, he has a depth perception of any obstacle which is in the front. And at the same time, he, can, he also has input coming in from the camera. So he can actually... Uh, for the demo, we would like to show our appreciation to Frank because we think he's been doing a great job running this whole presentation and the robots <laughs>
You're closer up and pan around the room. Uh, give me to the right. And keep turning on this. And go ahead and uh, stop and slow, slow down a little bit. Come back to your left. And stop there just a little bit. Now you can go forward. How much? And, uh, about a couple feet here. And if you, I see further here now. So if He's you turn uh, just a little <laughs> to your right here on the hand. But in, uh, you know, keeping the time in mind, uh, I'll just maybe run you guys through the business numbers we've done, uh, the projection as well. <laughs> <laughs> time is also money, so we, and we got our eye on the dollar as well. The eye is not just for the paper. <laughs> so, Fuck uh, you! <laughs> <laughs> so, we thought about some big cost. There's a cost in the device. Very minimal. $50 if we do it at a small, small scale. $20 if we do it at a large scale. Uh, we, have, we need servers. There will be a user acquisition cost. The development of the basic software, like you know, something which can get it. We started this two days ago, and it's almost running. We can maybe within three months we can get it up. Uh, that's 75k for that. If we keep further development going on, that's 300k for that. Uh, if we outsource this to a different call center in a, uh, in one of the developing countries, you can get it for 20, 21 cents per minute. If we keep it in the US, that's 63 cents per minute. Uh, there will be a training and development cost. That's 2,000 per employee because all of these uh, problems which you have. In I mean, it's good. You're running a q and Okay, so if, if you have any questions, uh, we can maybe uh, show you, we can answer your questions now. The basic idea is that we can possibly hit break even within one year because there's one million blind people within the US, and if we hit even like 10,000 people, that's 1% of the market, we can hit break even. So, questions from the judges?